So I'm John Johansson. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, namespacing LSMs a little bit. Uh, so containers, they've got lots of use cases. We've covered this before. Uh, you can see them if you haven't. Um, some of them even involve LSMs. Snappy uses AppArmor a little bit. Uh, system containers, the use case is for example, running uh, an Ubuntu container on top of Fedora and wanting Ubuntu to run just like it is at native with AppArmor, or even doing the reverse with Fedora on Ubuntu, that kind of thing, right? Uh, another one is Anabox or things like that with, uh, with, that are running Android in a container, right? So for SE Linux. Uh, so there's, there's some different use cases, and if we can do this, this will open up even more. Um, of course, uh, we all know that containers aren't really a thing on Linux. It's up to the container manager to define what they are. Um, they're made up of a whole bunch of different components. Uh, nothing new there. Uh, LSM quick review. I'm sure probably everybody knows what it is. If not, it's just a set of hooks and data uh, in this blob data in the, the kernel infrastructure that uh, is leveraged by AppArmor, SE Linux, uh, Tomoyo, uh, Smack, uh, a couple others in there, and then a whole bunch of out of tree ones that are trying to get in. Um, containers, when they use namespacing, it kind of looks like this. You're, you're imagining, oh, I got a container here with AppArmor, I got a container here with SE Linux. LSMs really don't want that. They want something more like this. Uh, we've got SE Linux at the root or whatever on the host, and then the container can have something else. That's fine. Uh, we, you know, we, we want to have a bound on the container, like the host wants to apply policy, and the container, whatever the container is running, as a separate LSM. It can have a separate policy, but it can't get around the bound that the host is applying. Uh, you could do AppArmor and AppArmor, which we've actually been doing for years. We can discuss that a little bit in a minute. Um, for the past, in the past, we've had the limit of a single LSM that got lifted a while ago to minor LSMs. And now with Casey's stacking work, we have major LSMs, multiple LSMs. And now you'll notice that this is different than what the container model I just showed was. We've got these LSMs all at the system level, all at the host. You, you have all of them when you put it in, that that's what they are, they're there. And they apply to every task on the system. Now this doesn't match completely with what we were talking about before, but it does work for some containers. Um, every LSM, so there's a user space interfaces, right, that the LSM provides a few, but every uh, LSM also provides its own. So AppArmor has its own set of interfaces that are different than the SE Linux or Smack to Moyo interfaces. Everyone is unique. Um, and then the the infrastructure, the LSM infrastructure, provides some, some interfaces. Um, you will notice that two of those are highlighted in yellow. Those ones are mistakes somewhat. They're common, so they're shared by SMAC, AppArmor, and SE Linux. This is actually a big problem. Uh, Casey's going to talk more about that. Um, he threw in the, dis we've got for his stacking where there's this display LSM value, that's, that's part of the stacking, and then there's new interfaces as well. Uh, we're not really going to cover those, we're going to leave those to Casey. Um, and the, you can also with the stacking see what LSMs are in place and running on the system. Um, but those yellow ones, we'll get back to them. Um, the yellow ones, if we virtualize them with the display LSM, it kind of starts looking like the, the model we saw before, right? We, we can have all three of them at the root, or all three of these uh, LSMs at the root of the system on the host, but using the display, the container is really only seeing, as long as it's old code and doesn't know what it's doing, it's only seeing, <laughs> right? It's only seeing the, the, the one LSM, whichever set is the display. Um, this can actually work for new code as well, that's stacking aware. Uh, there just has to be uh, some work in the LSM itself to, to do some things. We can talk about that a little more later. Um, so let's boot with multiple LSMs. Use the LSM equal to set different things. We're, we're going to boot AppArmor and SE Linux here. It's coming up on Ubuntu. 
and I'll just take a minute because I'm booting a full GUI for various reasons here. Um, and, you know, not liking the demo gods, they always blow my demos away. This is, you know, a screen capture, right? <laughs> so, it should work. <laughs> so you can see we've got the LSMs there, right? We booted up, we got App Armor, we got SE Linux in place, all well and good. Let's do it again. This time we're gonna switch it, we're gonna go uh, SE Linux and App, then App Armor in the LSM stack. So it's coming up, maybe. <laughs> Freaking out a little bit. And you notice all that red there, right? We start getting failures. I, in fact, we'll get another one pop up there and it, it never gets out of this. It won't boot. Uh, so, uh, why, right? This is one of the gotchas that we didn't catch when we were doing this originally. It, in fact, doesn't surface uh, with a lot of the use cases we were doing, but it does surface with uh, SE Linux first under Ubuntu. It doesn't affect Fedora, we'll get to there. Um, so let's back up. Why does the order matter? So we're booting with AppArmor policy, we're not booting with SE Linux. So in SE Linux, well, we're, SE Linux is enabled, but it's not loading any policy. Uh, the old code, it's not aware of the, uh, the LSM stacking, so it's using the display LSM. Uh, old code's using the shared interface like we talked about, right? The display LSM set. The display LSM is the first LSM in the stack by default. So AppArmor in the first case, SE Linux in the second. There's the clue. Um, Ubuntu is built with support for both SE Linux and AppArmor enabled in all its user space components uh, by default. Dbus is built to support SE Linux and AppArmor. <laughs> so Dbus SE Linux, it goes and looks and says, oh, well, I've got no policy, I'm not enforcing anything. That's okay. AppArmor comes in and says, I've got policy, that's great, and I'm enforcing, okay. I get an SE Linux label. And that's a no-no, so it kills it. So that's why we fail to boot. So first gotcha, right? Uh, so those virtualizing those interfaces wasn't quite enough uh, with the display LSM. Um, AppArmor has a, an A enabled that it's, its library calls, or some applications actually pass the library and do it directly. And what it does is it checks for the security FS mounted with AppArmor in it so that it knows that's there. And it also checks the AppArmor uh, enabled kernel parameter, or most of them do, okay? Uh, so what's happening is we're finding AppArmor is enabled, but we don't see that the display LSM isn't uh, AppArmor. And we're talking old code here. We want to run old code. We can't change the, the ABI from the kernel to user space, so this has got to work. Um, so what do we do? We change AppArmor a little bit, so the AA enabled, the security parameter and AppArmor enabled, it gets virtualized by the display LSM as well. So the old, old, old code that's checking this will see, hey, I'm not enabled when it, if, if the display LSM is not set. That fixes this problem. <sighs> Another gotcha. <laughs> and this is all gotchas, by the way. Um, pretty much anyways. Okay, Fedora host. SE Linux policy on boot, no app armor policy on the system. So we're just gonna boot. Uh, we're gonna, then once we boot, we're gonna create an app armor policy namespace or just load some app armor policy. Um, this is what we get. Uh, SE Linux is denying app armor. So what's going on? So this is the app armor call. This is AppArmor code, what, it, what it's doing, NS capable for the current user namespace, cap, pack, cap Mac admin. We'll cover why in a second. But that loops back into the system, uh, and it kind of looks like a, 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 um, it loops back into the system, and the LSM stack loops it back through, so SE Linux gets the capable call. And so what happens is, <laughs> 
as he Lennox says, no, you can't manage my policy. It denies it rightly, right? So what do we have to do? Um, we have to go back in. We change the AppArmor code. It's really simple. Uh, we, we change it to a direct call to the, cap the system capability instead of looping back through capability, so cap capable. And then we do the AppArmor capable call directly. Uh, the only reason it was done through NS capable before its long history is uh, originally the LSMs were stacking, uh, composing the capability modules themselves. Uh, with stacking, that went away. And so instead of having it composed at a whole bunch of places, we composed it in one place in the capable hook. So then we just had to call capable, we'd compose back through, and we're good. Well, it bit us. Um, so we can try a simple container. So um, we're going to do a cheroot here. And a cheroot's not really a container, and it should not be doing that. <laughs> okay, so anyways, we'll just describe what's going on here, or should be going on here. I'm not sure why it's dead. Um, so simple cheroot, we set up a cheroot, just uh, bind mount, uh, proc and bin and everything into the, the uh, a simple chroot directory that we set up. Chroot in and load some app armor policy. So what happens is we have two shells open, one's in this chroot, one's outside. Run the command in the chroot, policy gets applied, great. Run the command outside the chroot, policy gets applied. Not so great. Again, we go back to the, the original example demo of what the LSM stacking is doing. It's applied to the whole system, right? So we need more than just doing loading policy once we've cherooted or uh, set up a new namespace, whatever. Um, so yeah, more than LSM stacking, right? So we're going to back up. We talked about how AppArmor is being applied to the whole system, SE Linux applied to the whole system. Um, not just the true. What we want it, in this case, if we're setting up a container, we want it to apply just to the true or the, the namespace, whatever we're setting up as our container. Uh, we need a, a way to apply the LSM to just part of the system, right? A namespace, essentially. Um, LSM stacking is not LSM namespacing, at least not yet. Uh, maybe one day. Let's just get stacking in first. <laughs> um, okay, so AppArmor, however, needs to set up this policy namespace if we're going to do this. Um, and then we're going to have, then, then if it sets up its policy namespace, we're going to enter the policy namespace and then do the truth and everything's good, right? Like you'd expect. Um, AppArmor for a long time now has had policy namespaces and its own ability to do some composing, bounding, stacking, whatever you want to call it. Um, so AppArmor policy namespace bases are hierarchical. Um, a task can have multiple confinements on it. So this, there's a system confinement on that task in the blue, and some sub namespaces confinement on a task, and AppArmor will compose those two. So it, it's bound by the system so that the container, you don't just replace the AppArmor namespace or the AppArmor policy or host policy, whatever. You add to it, it's composing. Um, this was, we've been doing this for a while on Ubuntu, so LXD can do AppArmor and AppArmor containers on, but it doesn't work with any other LSM because it's just, it's just in AppArmor. Um, to get there, every one of AppArmor's interfaces are virtualized. The security FS entries, uh, we use a special jump link, a magic jump link, whatever you want to call it, in uh, security FS to jump into the AppArmor FS to support the policy namespace directory. Um, and that will virtualize the directory structure for us. Uh, procfs files, so when, when a task goes and looks at the proc files, they're actually virtualized by the namespace, so you get different labels out of them. Uh, get sock op option, so that's another interface. Uh, that has to be virtualized as well. Uh, and this is all AppRumor doing it. It's not the LSM. Uh, every LSM is going to have to do that currently. Uh, even some of our kernel parameters uh, have to be virtualized, like the enabled. <laughs> um, in addition, 
for some, this, this was a feature development, not necessarily needed, but what it was needed for uh, the container case, uh, system containers anyway, is Creu. You've heard about Creu for SE Linux today, I believe. Um, so we also had to add Creu support. So we needed to hold on to the, the policy in a form that we could dump it back out. Um, and AppArmor actually transposes its policy, unpacks it, and does operations to make sure it's kernel friendly uh, and fast. So we actually have to hold on to the old policy and we compress it, store it, and then we can dump it back out to user space if Creu wants it, and then they can reload it. Um, the policy has to also be namespace aware when we're doing this, so when the container tries to do this, it sets it up correctly again for the proper namespaces. Uh, obviously, we had to add interfaces for uh, container managers to do this. Uh, we're not going into a lot of details. While we're at it, we're going to hit some more issues with getting these namespaces working. Um, Okay, system containers, security FS. We talked a little bit about this. Uh, we had the problem, you know, we had to virtualize our security FS files. Here's another problem. Even with we're virtualizing them, when you boot up an operating system image, it says, I'm gonna mount, okay, mount security FS. Security FS is not mount, mount capable. Uh, so what happens is you try to boot the image and it fails to boot. Uh, great fun. So short term, we can have the container manager map security FSN. That's what we're having LXD do right now. And then the container image has to be, the image has to be container aware. It says, oh, I'm running in a container, so I will do this instead. I don't have to mount that. Really sucks. We don't want that. Um, long term, we need to make these things mount capable to, to make this work. But you can work with it as it is now, as long as your container manager sets things up right and your image is set up for it. <laughs> what can you do? Uh, that comp and no new privs. This one is so much fun. Um, so no new privs uh, was added with set comp. It's a, uh, PR control and what it does is lets the task say, hey, I don't wanna have any new uh, privileges. Uh, so lock the system down. And the LSMs respect that, sort of, <laughs> largely. Um, but the problem is if the container manager's doing this and doesn't expect things, it doesn't know what's going on. You try to boot, say, an image with uh, LSM policy, and then the LSM policy is trying to do some domain transitions, do some other stuff. Those aren't gonna be allowed. So it tries to do something, they're locked out. And, and it fails. Um, and this is real problematic. Uh, there's issues on, you know, all over the place with this around the LSMs. Uh, we have to build it in policy that we are allowing overrides. But if you're running uh, a host image, like in the system container case, or uh, uh, a system container, and you're booting an operating system, it doesn't think it's in a, a sec comp jail. It doesn't work to make it, uh, the LSM policy aware of it because it can't be. Um, so we go back to what Appermer is doing with its uh, uh, namespaces, its stacking, internal stacking, bounding. So we had to add the ability for AppArmor to track what the confinement was when no new privs is set. So when that gets set on the system, it's not exactly when it's set, but we won't get into that de implementation detail. Uh, it grabs that confinement, stores it off, so we, we know what it is. And now, when we go to make transitions in, in our policy, we can allow those transitions, and as long as those transitions are stacked against or bounded by the policy that was in place when no new privs was enforced, we can guarantee that no new privileges are being added and we can allow those, uh, those uh, transitions for the, the LSM. So you boot your container, your, your system image, it works. It can do those changes. You got the, you got the uh, host OS that's locked down its container image or, or confinement, and the underneath in the container is free to make changes. Uh, any other LSM is gonna have to do something similar if it's respecting no new privs. 
uh, whether it's actually supported through the LSM infrastructure or not, that would be something would be nice, but at the moment it's not. Um, anybody who wants to do that is going to have to do that. Um, <sighs> nesting of containers. So LXD, not just LXD, uh, there's lots of cases for nesting of containers. So uh, a case would be um, LXD container, so you boot an operating system, and then in that operating system, your virtual machine, whatever you want to call it, you say, I'm going to use LXD and boot something else, right? There's one case. Uh, you're in a container. Uh, again, you've got your host. You're in your container running something. And you want to run an application container, uh, a snappy Docker or something else, where it's, again, using an LSM. So it doesn't actually have to be nesting host con or system containers. It can be a system container with something else nested. Um, we run into problems, again. Um, specifically, user namespaces. Go figure, right? Um, currently, there's no way to map capability requests to the policy namespace that AppArmor has. Uh, no way to map a user namespace to the policy namespace, uh, the capability request that comes along with it. Or, and no way to uh, know when the user namespace is even created. Again, we're missing some hooks here. This is uh, a solution that needs work, and we're working on it. Um, but we can do something. We can associate root user namespace and the root policy namespace for AppArmor that we have. And we can limit our stacking depth for con uh, host containers, containers doing this kind of thing right now, to two, right? So we know. If the user namespace is equal to the root namespace, we're good. We can use the policy namespace. We can get that mapping that we need. If it's not, we're limiting our stack to two. And then we know it's the other. So then we can actually figure out where things are. Uh, long term, what we need to really fix this is we need some new LSM hooks. And we need to be able to associate policy to the um, user namespace. Uh, what we don't want, though, and this is general, not just AppArmor, but for other LSMs as well. We don't want to actually tie our policy namespaces to the user namespace explicitly, whatever, like uh, network namespaces are tied to the user namespace. We actually don't want that. We want more flexibility for the policy LSM namespace, whatever you want to call it. Um, we have cases uh, where we're using policy namespaces, AppArmor is anyways, uh, where you're not going to change the user namespace. So there's, there's a lot there that we don't want. We need to come up with some infrastructure. And there's some patches in works, but they haven't been posted yet to, to propose ways to fix this. So with a little support from LXD, we can actually run Ubuntu container on Fedora. Um, so uh, little support being LXD, like I said, has to be aware of AppArmor. It has to be able to set up the policy namespace. It's got to be able to set up the mappings that we already talked about. Um, <laughs> second video not showing. <laughs> OK, so uh, we've showed this demo before, unfortunately. Um, we can try, let's see. Can we get that to go? <laughs> of course. So we had a demo there of just simply run, run, launching an LXD container. You can see the AppArmor policy at the host level and how it's confining and changing at this. The, in the container, and then you can go in the container and look at and see its virtualized policy. It's a really simple demo. Um, I will see if I can get that up for people to look at. Um, not sure why it's dead. Uh, future, we do have some additional things to do. So um, move to dynamic LSM stacking. So right now, for the namespacing that we have right now, AppArmor is doing, I mean, it, he's using uh, it's using LSM stacking, and it's multi-LSM, AppArmor, SD Linux, or anything else is not possible without LSM stacking. It's all built on top of LSM stacking. 
Um, but AppArmor itself is doing the additional work of stacking the policy, tracking that, and doing the bounding. Um, we could conceivably do this in the, the LSM infrastructure and convert some of the, that from AppArmor into the LSM infrastructure, and so other LSMs could take advantage of it and not have to recreate that part of the work. Uh, there are some costs to doing that, and instead of doing pre-allocated vectors and uh, some of the optimizations that the infrastructure is doing right now, it's going to have would have to do some dynamic mapping of some kind, link lists. There's different possibilities, and we would actually have to see whether the cost is worth doing or whether it's just we you know we force this on each LSM to support if they're going to. Um, that's something we have to look into for the future still. Um, uh, there also would need to be some kind of interface agreed upon. <laughs> Getting any interface agreed upon is um, fun. <laughs> Casey, you want to take that? <laughs> okay, so um, do you, any questions? So I'm very sympathetic to the uh, no new pros problem. I think it took us three or four kernel releases before we sorted that out, and that's not in the stacking case. Um, but when you were describing it, I was curious. So it sounds like you basically, if you have a process that spawns off another nested app armor, namespace instance, whatnot, and that process is running under no new pros, it sounds like you take a snapshot of that policy and do your calculations. Y yes. So, so, well, I guess what I'm wondering is, are you concerned, because this is something I'm trying to figure out for SE Linux, but like, what happens if you were to change the host policy? Then is the, is the nested AppArmor policy still going to be operating under that snapshot that you took, which might not be valid anymore? <laughs> so, uh, no. So okay. what happens, and it's kind of ugly. So we grab the confinement labeling that is in place when no new privs gets invoked. And we store that off. And we also actually carry along the new confinement that is changing, right? So what it's supposed to be without that. We, um, when we go through, we dynamically compose those when you, when you create a new task or a new, a new ex like exec or change change confinement. It doesn't have to be done for every task. Um, you can just inherit the composed one. Uh, and then the, that composed one, okay, we're doing the bounding, so we have to walk everything in that. Um, so then when we go to change confinement, what we do is we start with the... We start with the uh, broken apart, so label, and we, we, we compute what we need for, sorry, um, for the, the new confinement. And while we're doing that, we also are measuring if the uh, no new privs saved confinement needs to change. If policy allows that change, then we have this direct mapping about which components change. And we update the no new privs, locked no new privs, and we'd save that new one off and so now we get the new composition of the, the, the changed host policy because it was allowed. And it's locked down as if it's no new privs under that change because policy is still no new privs. You, you don't pull that away from the task. And, and then you get the whole new composition of the two. It's ugly. But I couldn't come up with another way to do it. Uh, so I also have a question about the no new privs thing. So, mm -hmm. uh, it, just to clarify, did I understand it correctly that the problem is that um, you're trying to spawn a container and the process that's trying to spawn a container is already subject to no new privs? Or um, is that different? <laughs> Potentially. Um, that's not particularly necessarily the case. The, the problem is there's several ways you could set, up, set it up. It could be that it's already in no new privs. Uh, ideally, your container manager wouldn't apply that to late. Uh, the problem is uh, you set up a, a new container. Say you don't set up no new privs first. You're, it's almost your last thing you're going to set. Okay? So you're not confined by no new privs when you set up your container. You set up, you set up a new policy um, in the container. So 
your, your task is, has uh, an AppArmor namespace and it has a, uh, some policy in that namespace that, that it's taking, let's just say it's unconfined even, right? So now when you start your container running, that task starts running and it has no new privs applied to it. It hits an exec and it says, okay, I, I want to change, I want, I want to do this exec and the exec, uh, the LSM rules app armor policy says, when you run this, this program, this exec, uh, I'm going to change the policy for this application to some other label or some other profile, whatever you want to call it. Um, and, but no new privs is going to block that. And the, the, the image, the system image that you're running in the container isn't aware that it's no new privs. It's, it's, it's running like it's uh, on the host. Wait, like, but you said the container manager is no new privs. And you're no, not setting no new privs. So, the no, the container, ma the container manager, let's say the container manager is not no new privs. Let's say we're doing this sanely. <laughs> um, and the, the container manager is a worst case. Um, and the container that it's setting up is set to no new privs right before it starts running the container. So we don't have to deal with trying to figure out what the uh, confinement is when we're setting this container up. Oh, so why do you set no new privs on a container? Uh, some container managers are setting no new privs because they're setting seccomp policy. Now, not everybody's doing that. Okay. But when you're creating a user namespace, you can set a seccomp policy without setting no new privs. Who says you're using a user namespace? <sighs> okay, that answers the question. Thanks. <laughs> Right, so it, containers are this you know, amorphous blob, right? And you have all these different types of container managers. Not everybody's using user namespaces. Uh, uh, Docker, for example. So yeah, it's, it can, no new privs is a real pain. More questions? If not, let's thank John.